Hey you guys, welcome to East Mountain 3D. I am Bai Weber and today we are going to make this look like this. It's a simple DIY project that I made a couple of months ago, but now I'm finally at the point where I want to share it with the world. So stay tuned. Okay, so before we go into the workshop to assemble the pieces, we need, of course, to, to print the pieces. And uh, since I don't have the actual footage of when I printed it, um, I am going to quickly show you how to set it up uh, on the build plate um, in the slicer. I am using Simplify 3D. So the first one is a frame. This is the frame that goes inside. Now, it has this little... Uh, bevel here uh, we want that to face upwards so I'm gonna just gonna turn that around so we have a totally flat surface now against the heated bed okay we have that centered and now we are just while we get this in we can easily have some more on the plate so we're gonna do like this nope. and for this one to make it to make it strong I'm gonna put it on this side and likewise with this I'm gonna put it on this side okay we need three of these each so I'm just gonna copy and paste three of these and copy paste three of these okay I'm gonna just move these inside here okay so prepare to print okay that's that looks good. It's going to take an hour to print this on my settings, on my particular printer. Um, so this should just look like this when it's done. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first batch. Second batch is the frame B, which is the main frame. It of course needs to be printed like this to avoid any kind of uh, support material, unnecessary support material here. And uh, that's pretty much everything you can print in batch 2. So we're gonna make that ready, uh, save it and upload it and then print it. And then batch 3, remove that one. Uh, you are free to choose, but I would recommend printing this. Let's see what it takes. 25 minutes with low settings uh, this comes in handy I'll show you later how how and why and uh, yeah that's the last one uh, save it print it and let's uh, then go into the workshop so we are here in the workshop we are trying to make this IKEA lamp turn into a soft box with a with a piece of um, diffusing material in front of this lampshade but before we do I need to say that uh, I'm not saying that this this little DIY solution is better than for instance the Elgato key light or any kind of professional lights out there but it is certainly cheaper and actually it's fun to make to make the IKEA softbox lamp you will need these things the lamp of course which will only set you back about 10 euros um, an LED light bulb. I bought uh, this IKEA LED with 11.5 watts, which according to IKEA is equivalent to 75 watts. And yes, I know that it only has a Kelvin count of 27, uh, 2700, but with the extra amount of light you get, you can easily uh, fine tune this in your capture software. And please do not use old type light bulbs. They tend to get hot and of course, don't leave this lamp on unsupervised. Don't leave this lamp on unsupervised. Uh, you will also need a plain piece of paper or some kind of fabric that will diffuse the light. Um, it doesn't have to be anything special, but not too thick. You will also need some 3D printed parts. And of course, I hope by now you already have a 3D printer, but if not, I'm sure you know someone who has. To secure the mounts on the lampshade, you need six M3 by 10 millimeter bolts of any kind, and also six M3 hex nuts. The tools needed, our power drill, the suitable Allen key, a sharp blade from a box cutter, and a marker of some kind. 
0 and you also of course need this uh, 3.5 or 3 millimeter but 3.5 is, is, uh, is the one I go with 3.5 millimeter drill uh, it is optional if you want to um, print this uh, ruler thing I made um, I just think it's it's a nice way to mark mark where you need to drill the holes in the lamp shape but that's totally up to you okay we are going to see we have six of these six hex nuts we have the printed parts which will uh, which will hold the frame and uh, the inside pieces will hold the hex nuts and making it easy to to tighten this down but first we need to remove the lampshade and it's uh, as simple as turning it one of the way this way no this way one of the ways like this Okay, now that we have the lampshade off its socket, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it in this fancy ruler. Yeah, I had to switch for a pencil. I'm gonna mark all six holes. Like that. Yeah, we got some nice marks to hold, make the holes from. We don't need that rule anymore, hopefully. This metal is actually very soft, so you can just put some nice marks in it with this pointy thing to hopefully make it easy. Or easier to drill. Watch your fingers. One. So the rest is pretty simple. We need to mount these on the outside. If you notice, I've made them uh, these uh, holes a bit longer, so you can uh, fine tune your your position. Uh, but for now, we are just going to get them mounted. Okay, we have these two pieces of the frame. All right, so for for testing it out, I'm just going to use a plain piece of paper from the normal printer. This is the main frame where this locking frame goes in, and they are like how do I show that? Oh, oh yeah, you can see it there. It has this locking mechanism so the piece with this uh, this little this little rounded piece right here has to go against the paper for it to lock in place eventually it gets there and the way you know that it is working is like sounds like a drum. That's pretty cool. So now we have our softbox diffuser. We need to get rid of all that. Take a sharp knife, watch the fingers. Okay. 
Now this should be able to slide right in here. And there you have it. That's it, you guys. I now have lights from both sides. Simple project, very inexpensive, and most important, it was fun to make. So uh, until next time, remember to subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, share it if you uh, know someone who could uh, benefit from it. And yeah, until next time, happy building.